Hello and welcome to Seniors Count. I'm your host, Tula Mall. On our show, we believe that you are the foundation on which Boston was built. So our goal is to connect you to resources, benefits, and information to enhance your life. Thank you for joining us. Today my guest is Kevin Osborne, a 30-year veteran of the computer industry who consults on software development, electronics, and product prototyping, and also leads Maker Workshops. Today he shares with us a developing technology called 3D printing. Welcome to the show, Kevin. Hi. So glad you're here today. So today our show is about technology, and tell us, what is a 3D printer? Well, so a 3D printer, it's, it's not exactly a printer, it's an additive manufacturing machine. In other words, it makes things by adding material to nothing. So it, uh, uh, like uh, the old way that people used to make things with computer controlled machines okay. was to take a big block of aluminum or something like that and then use a, a, a rotating bit to grind away the outside. That's called mm -hmm. CNC milling. Yep. Uh, and it's very wasteful, uh, but you can make very nice things that most of your engine blocks and things like that are made, made with that. Hmm. But 3D printing is a relatively new technology. It's not that new, it's 30 years old. But, uh, but it uh, that, uh, makes things by adding layer by layer. Interesting. So tell us, I mean, you hear this, you hear about 3D printers all the time. What's all the buzz about? Why is this so innovative? Well, so like I said, 3D printers have been around for about 30 years. Yep. But uh, they were invented in 1984, right here in Massachusetts wow. at MIT, and uh, and then uh, but they were about a quarter of a million dollars. Wow! And uh, so they weren't very accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, some big companies had them. Uh, sometimes designers would send out and have things printed, but that was kind of slow. Yeah. So the big companies liked to have them so they could do rapid iteration of their designs. Yeah. But it was really out of reach of common people. About uh, in 2008. Uh, a guy named Adrian Boyer at, the, at Bath University in England uh, created the first replicating rapid prototyping machine, or RepRap. Okay. And his idea was that to build a 3D printer. Oh, Aaron <laughs> is making its introduction as a 3D printer that, itself. Uh, a 3D printer that could print its own parts. Oh. And so that it can make copies of itself. Ah, oh, very interesting. What a concept. And, and, and then and he made it open source so anyone could build one. Okay. And as a result, many, many people built them and started innovating and making new designs so that they became cheaper and cheaper until, and then some people started making kits so that people less handy could make them. And, uh, and now you can buy them at Staples. Okay. So show us, I mean, it's making a, a little bit of a racket here, our little yep. 3D printer. Tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here, because it looks like, I don't know, it's very futuristic. It's got lights. It's moving around. I don't, tell us a little bit about right. it. Right. Well, some of them even have cameras, so you can post your things to the yeah. web and things like that. But th this, uh, basically, it's, uh, it's called a Cartesian robot, which, yeah. it, which means that it, it drives uh, a head around in X, Y, and Z. OK. OK. Actually, the head goes X, Y on this one. Yep. And the Z platform is goes, a, up, is and a, goes up and yeah. down. And what it does is it raises this platform up to the top. And then uh, there's a, a piece of, of thin filament, which is, is plastic. Mm -hmm. It looks kind of like a weed whacker line. OK. And, uh, and then it pushes that through a heated block and then into, through a nozzle like a hot glue gun. I was just thinking that, yeah. Yeah. And so then uh, it, it, it then uh, squeezes out a layer of melted plastic onto the platform. And then when it finishes one layer, it drops the platform down and prints the next layer. Wow. So, so like, for example, this, this is an example of one that's uh, um, uh, printed. It, it's, just, it's just an outline yep. of a heart, actually. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's twisted around and yep. to make a vase. It's like a little and, bit, it's solid on the bottom. Yep, yeah. and you can, see, you can see the layers. And uh, oh, okay. depending on how, what resolution you print at, those layers are either more or less visible. So. Wow, so it's a pretty thin, I mean, it's pretty thin. I mean, like yeah. you said, it's see-through. What? Like, show us something that's a little thicker, so people can get a sense. So of... here's here's a. This was a scan of me that was taken at a local public library, ah. uh, and uh, you know it's, it's solid. It's pretty solid. You can yeah. actually print it. It's entirely solid if you like. Okay. When I print mechanical parts, I do print them solid because they're more they're more solid. Sturdy, yeah. More sturdy, uh, uh, like uh, this uh, this propeller that I made here for this uh, motor uh, mount, but. Um, but it, uh, it, 3D printing is actually kind of slow. Yep. And so if you print it with a fill pattern or, or hollow, it's a lot faster. Okay. But it's less strong. So. so tell me the difference of how long this takes to print versus something. I think this took about 30 minutes to print, and this took about six hours. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So, yeah. So it Significantly. Takes, 
Yes. Just different in time. Interesting. All right. So, um, what are what types of 3D printers are there? So there's this one that's printing plastic. Right. What, what else is there? Well, so this is this is called FDM or okay. fused deposition modeling okay. uh, to be kind <laughs> technical. of technical. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it like I said, it squeezes out plastic and it can print in. A number of different plastics, uh, uh, and most of the home-grade consumer printers it print either in PLA or ABS or some of the other plastics that are available for the, these. Um, on the industrial scale and higher up in price, so starting around ten to twenty thousand dollars, you can start to get into other materials. So uh, there's one that uses an inkjet to print a hardener on a powder. Okay. So things like and it makes like plaster-like materials. Uh, they're, and then they can be actually fired and made into ceramics. Uh, so you can print in ceramics. Um, they're very high resolution, they look really nice, but they're really fragile. Um, there are uh, selective laser sintering machines, which use a laser, and uh, they take the platform and then they lay down a thin layer of metal powder or plastic powder, whatever they want to yep. melt, and then they use a laser on an XY or with a mirror to, uh, to draw each layer and then they drop it down and then add another layer of powder. And those are called selective laser sintering machines and they can print in titanium, brass, stainless steel, a number of metals, nylon, other, you know, other plastics as well. Uh, but uh, they're, they're, they're on in the range of you know, $100,000 wow. machines. So you're talking about a lot of different materials. What yeah. are the applications for them? So I mean, you've made a bunch of little fun little things, little sculptures. Right, little toys, oh, fidgets. <laughs> yep, a bracelet. And I've seen jewelry. But what are, so these are fun things people can do at home. Mm -hmm. What are some other applications for a, a 3D printer? Well, I use it uh, in my uh, prototyping practice to, yep. to make cases for electronics, to make uh, mechanical connection pieces to hold things together. Okay. Uh, so wait, so yep. one thing at a time. So a case sure. for a mechanical piece, what's that, like a holder? Like yeah, a, like okay. a... Like the case for your cell phone, for example. Oh, okay. So All right. to put the electronic board in, you got, know. Got it. Okay. And um, and um, I also um, uh, we make boxes out of laser cut materials, but we hold them together with little plastic corner pieces that we three D print. Okay. Um, and um, some people, uh, jewelry makers, uh, they some some of them make jewelry directly mm -hmm. in the plastic, but some of them just use it to iterate their design. And then there are three D printers that will print in wax for lost wax casting. Oh. To okay. make uh, gold, jewelry, yep. and things like that, oh. uh, and um, and then other people use it to make actual mechanical parts for um, machines that they're 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 designing or building. Okay, I know you brought a slide up. Can you walk mm -hmm. us through the slide about what? So these are some other things that people are using the three D printer for. Right uh, in the upper left, there uh, is a project by Stanford, and there's actually a, a do-it-yourself guy who's doing this in his backyard. Yep, it's a it's a concrete printer. And it actually is printing a full-size house. So it's a huge printer. I mean, the yeah. one we have here is uh, maybe like one foot by one and a half feet. So this printer that is making a house is like right. A they set it up tank. on they set up on site basically, okay. and it has uh, two sets of rails, like mm -hmm. like railway car rails kind yep. of, and then uh, two crane, like a gantry crane, like like you'd see for loading a ship. Yep. And then uh, a concrete pump that pumps it in, and then it. It moves that around and, and extrudes the whole house. Wow. Layer by layer. Wow. Fast setting concrete. How long do you think that's going to take? Do you have any idea how long that's going to I think taking? they said a, a few days. Oh. Like, yeah, just a, you know, a couple days. Wow. Okay. Then um, they got to think about the electricity and plumbing later. Now, the, in, <laughs> in the, yeah, exactly. You have to make sure you plan that in because <laughs> yeah. that. Um, the, uh, the next one down is a, a titanium jaw mm -hmm. that was designed from scans of a woman's actual jawbone before it was removed because it had, uh, she had cancer in her jaw. Yeah. And they replaced her jaw with a custom fit piece that uh, could go right back in. And so it, it enabled her to eat and speak and, and, and do things that she wasn't able to do. That's amazing. Uh, and that uses, uses that laser process okay. I was talking about. Uh, to the um, to the right of that is a prosthetic hand. Yep. Uh, this is a collaboration between a guy in um, South Africa and a guy in California um, who are making prosthetics for children who have uh, less than the normal number of fingers. Okay. And um, and uh, it replaces like a thousand dollar or several thousand dollar prosthetic with something that could be printed for for forty dollars. Okay. And. Um, and it can also be reprinted as the child grows, ah. so, which is really important. Yeah. And then up in the upper right is an ear. Uh, it's 3D printed. 
uh, either directly out of cartilage or sometimes they print a scaffolding that then they grow cells on wow. that eats the, the scaffolding away and then you're oh. left with an actual actual organ. And then so that's going to be implanted on somebody. Right, to replace, to replace uh, an ear. Yeah. They, they, they also make bladders and uh, there's actually a few people walking around with bladders that were 3D printed and, and, and larynxes. Wow, and what's the, I guess, the, how long do they last or is it basically once they're made forever? Is that the intention? They're, uh, they're actually just actually regular organs. So they print them, in the cases of the bladders, they print a scaffolding yep. and then they grow the patient's own cells on them. Wow. And so they end up with a bladder made out of their own cells. So there's no rejection, anything like that. And then now, of course, it's subject to the same problems that any human organ can yep. have, but, uh, but it's, it's there. They're actually starting to print more complex organs like livers. Wow. But uh, that, there's more complex. structure and yep. complexity and different types of cells. But they're actually starting to, to tackle that now. So this is being done in research hospitals, I'm assuming in Boston. So yeah, Boston's it's been done all, actually all over Boston, California, places like that, yeah. So there was one other thing on the slide yep. that, uh, it slide's not there anymore, but it was, t tell me, it was a little face, it looked like it was dark. It was made out of chocolate. Oh my goodness, I love that. Did in you fact, make that? Did no, I, I didn't make that. Uh, okay. Actually, my printer won't print directly in chocolate, although I could probably modify it to do okay. that. Uh, but you can actually print molds and make your own chocolate molds because there uh, is FDA approved uh, plastic material for that. Okay, so you make the mold and then you pour the chocolate yeah. in and then... But like, there's, there's actually a small company that's, that's making a chocolate printer that will... They're, they're, they're selling it on the sort of consumables model. So you have $100 for the printer and you have to buy little cartridges that will make your own confections uh, in your own So shape. instead of plastic coming through, it prints it's in chocolate. printing in chocolate. Yeah. What can't these things do? <laughs> Very interesting. Um, so, I mean, we've talked about a lot of different ways that people are using these printers. Um, you know, organs, a skin, house. Um, talk about maybe some other unusual household ways you can use these printers. I mean, you, you, this, these are sculptures and jewelry, but can you tell us about some other stuff? Yeah, a lot of people, like, if they, you know, if they have an old dishwasher or something like that and that plastic bit breaks, you know, oh. they could actually just quickly whip up a replacement for it. And, and I know a lot of people do that. I've, I've actually made things to hold things together in my house. People uh, need a special uh, you need a coat hook. Uh, the other day, I was missing some hardware for a project that I was working on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to the local store, and they didn't have it. And so I said, well, well wait a minute. I have a 3D printer. And so I just printed, printed the part I needed. So, wow. Yeah. Tell me about the process of telling the 3D printer what to print. So do you need special software? How does that work? Yeah, it's, it that, it's, a really good, it's a really good question because the 3D printer itself is pretty dumb. It mm -hmm. doesn't have a very powerful computer in it. Yep. It basically knows how to move the head around and extrude uh, uh, plastic. And that's the kind of commands you give it. Say, go to this XY position, and while you're moving, extrude this much plastic. And so you have to break down a 3D model, a computer model, okay. uh, like, uh, say, in Toy Story, where they make the, the, the computer models of the characters. Yep. Those same computer models are descriptionally outside of the uh, object. Mm -hmm. And then that is then brought into some software that usually comes with the 3D printer, or there's a lot of open source variants, that uh, slice it into layers, okay. and then, uh, and then c convert those layers into those movement commands for the printer. So it's called a slicer. Wow. So you do, so I mean, you need a computer, yep. right, to, to, and then you need some, you need to know what that software is that, to create the 3D imaging. Right. So just take a little, little technical um, knowledge to do it. Not, not so much anymore. I mean, at, at one point, the, 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 the software called CAD, Computer Aided Design Software, oh. to design uh, 3D objects was very complex mm -hmm. and required lots of trainings and the ones typically used in industry cost $6,000 a year to use and things like that. But there's a ton of free stuff now online. There are web applications. Some of them work in your iPad. There's one for the iPad made by, uh, um, uh, it's called 123D app, that you can actually s pretend you're a sculptor and just push and mold ah. things like that. Uh, you can also uh, use a 3D scanner. And while those aren't as good yet, uh, they're, they're getting more accessible. There's now a $400 3D scanner that you can hold in your hand and scan around. It's based on the technology from the Kinect, from the Xbox. Okay. Uh, but uh, so you could scan something and then modify it and print it, or you can um, you can design it from scratch. So if someone wanted to see one of these in real life, and they or you know or they had an idea of something they wanted to build, where can they go to learn more about? 
3D printers, or at least check one out. And sure. Uh, there's a, there's a, a lot of good opportunities in the Boston area. Uh, several of the public libraries are actually getting 3D printers. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's some plans for, uh, for the Jamaica Plain Library ah. in Boston to get one, and uh, the Newton uh, Free Library has one right now, and, and it's, it's available for patrons to use. Um, there's also uh, maker spaces, which where people share tools and things like that. Okay. And one of those is in uh, Somerville called Artisans Asylum, and uh, there's another one called Cambridge Hack Space. And then uh, in uh, Burlington, there's a family-oriented maker space called uh, Einstein's Workshop. And uh, in Waltham, there's a new store where you can actually build your own 3D printer or buy a 3D printer or just take something to be printed. It's called the Printer Bay. Huh. Could you take just um, a conceptual idea or do you have to come already with the, the, the I guess, the information in CAD, right? You know, I think it depends on, you know, like I do a class in libraries where okay. people come and they just design something really quickly and then we print it in the class. Oh, how fun. Uh, and, uh, and, and some of these other uh, organizations offer classes like that. It's a great way to stretch your mind, I tell you, because, uh, I mean, I'm a software guy. Yeah. And when I first started doing 3D printing, it was a little intimidating, but then now it's really fun. I really love doing it. Yeah, because you go from thinking in a two-dimensional space to a three-dimensional exactly. space. Exactly. So if someone was interested in, they could just look, go up, go online and look up a maker workshop and yep. and check one out. I think that'd be really interesting. Yeah, um, on my web website, uh, baldwisdom.com, yep. uh, there's a, a calendar of the workshops that I lead. That would be one way to, to find find a place. And there's lots of uh, lots of good uh, good uh, maker spaces in, in the Boston area. That's so interesting. Um, so how difficult? I mean, we talked a little bit about it, but how difficult is it to really use one? Is it is it just pretty much so you get one at home, let's say, how difficult it is to make the whole process work? So um, it's really easy. In fact, you can start with, you don't even have to design anything. Like th this, uh, this Yoda, I downloaded this from Thingiverse. Okay. It's, a, it's a website where people upload their designs. And oh. So, and, and in fact, they even have a, a, a portion of their website where you can actually customize things. You can change, like if you wanted to make a, a sleeve for a flower vase that has a pattern on mm -hmm. it, you can change the pattern and things like that. You just you don't even have to know anything to, to use that. And then you can download it and print it. Um, then you have to put it through whatever your printer software is to create the thing. In my case, I put it on a, a little SD card, which is a memory card like yep. is in your camera. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, you press print. Uh, and it, it's pretty much. And then you wait. Yep, then you wait. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's really slow. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think the future holds for 3D printing? What, where, where's um, it going? So the organ stuff is really exciting. Absolutely. That's that's really interesting. But uh, they're also uh, uh, working on so uh, besides mechanical things, mm -hmm. they're working on actually printing electronics as well. So you can actually print the actual circuits. Oh. And so you could actually you know not just have a factory that can make plastic. Yeah. You can have a pl factory that can make the whole cell phone. So that's going to need more than one like little tube with stuff coming right, out of it. Right, right, right. And it might be one machine or you might have a separate machine that does that. Uh, who knows what, where, where the world will lead. Uh, the, newer, the newer consumer grade printers are starting to come out so that they can print in more than one material at once. Oh, wow, uh, already? So, so yeah, so this, this one actually has an extra slot for a second extruder. Okay. And there's some that have up to four extruders so that you can print. Um, the biggest um, um, problem with, with these printers is that when you try to print something that has an overhang, like a T, yep. uh, it's melted plastic. So when you get over ah. here, it's just going to droop, droop down. So you either have to print support material or you have to print it upside down. Ah, <laughs> and the support material, if it's made out of the same stuff, it's harder to break off and things like that. So if you print in a different material that's dissolvable, then you can, um, you, can make you can make anything. You can make absolutely anything. So right now you're printing only one color at a time. Yeah. I mean, you have things here of different gray, green, yeah. blue. But you really can only print in about one color at a time. Right. But if you had second, not only could you print in different materials, but you could actually print Yeah, in you can print in multiple, multiple colors, colors, not full color. Okay. Uh, Explain that. What do you mean? So, like, if you wanted something to capture the full shading of your face and, you know, the, the color of your necklace and everything like that, uh, you know, you can't do that with one of these printers. Oh, okay. You can do it with one of those plaster printers because the, the hardener that they spray on can be colored, and it's an inkjet printing process. So they basically just use a printer head and, and can print... Uh, objects in full color, and you can order those online if you'd like. Interesting, interesting. Um, so you, you, work, you use it, or most people are using it to create prototypes, like you said, that's what you use it for. So is it kind of like small models of the potential product? Is that something that you use it for? I do. I sometimes, I mean, I make things for production too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, and 
And a lot of people are getting into making things for small scale production. To make a plastic, like, like what? well, to make yeah. a plastic mold, you know, okay. it's really expensive to make an injection mold. Oh, okay. And so, in order to pay for that, you have to make like hundreds of thousands of that wow. object. But if you know you're only going to make a hundred of something, you can 3D print them. It'll take a while, hmm. but it's it's better to 3D print them. You can also print molds to make things out of rubber and silicone and things like that as well. So if you wanted to do that, I actually did that for a product prototype I did as a dog chew toy uh, that I printed the mold on my 3D printer and then cast it in the urethane rubber. If you're making a mold, but then you're using it to put something in it, will it, because you I mean, because I'm thinking like, okay, let's say I wanted to make a mold for a cake. Uh -huh. Then when I put that in the oven, it won't melt? Well, you, you, you know, uh, for a cake, it would be difficult. Okay. So yeah. the stuff that you're making, the silicone is, it dries in. It's a two part uh, plastic that you mix together oh, okay. and it has a hardener. Oh, so it has a hardener, yeah, so yeah, it doesn't yeah, require yeah. cooking, for right, lack of right, a better word. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, some of these plastics, I mean, they have different heat ranges. Yep. So nylon, for example, can be heated more. So if you need some small amount of heat, you can use a, 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 a material like nylon. But if you uh, use something like this PLA, if you, get, if you put this in boiling water, it'll get really it soft. It gets soft, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I. Some people are using that actually to make for. braces, uh, uh, orthopedic braces. Yeah. Uh, they, they actually print out a flat object that then, then they dip in hot water and then they, they mold it around the person's yeah. wrist. I was thinking um, mouth, like mouth guards or retainers. Yeah. I bet that's really good for that. I don't know. A lot of dentists are actually using 3D technology, not 3D printers so much, but 3D machine, uh, CNC machines in their office to do custom uh, Mouth custom mouthpieces and whatever. things like that. You know. Yeah. Wow. So interesting. So if you can believe it, we're almost out of time. What are we printing right here? Just so oh, we... I'm printing another one of those bracelets. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this is a stretchy bracelet. Uh, That's um, so cool. And this, the material itself is this. This is PLA, and it's it's a little bit brittle. But yep. uh, if you design it right, you can actually make it do yeah, many it's, things. Yeah. It feels pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. I'm so excited to have my first 3D printed jewelry. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kevin, thank you so much for coming today and showing us, you know, 3D printers and where they're going and what they're doing. Uh, any last words for our audience about 3D printers? Oh, no, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to take up and uh, it's a great way to stretch your brain. And uh, also, you know, especially seniors, uh, you know, uh, they have a lot of experience and uh, and a lot of great ideas. I know there's a lot of people who are retired who are inventing in their garages yes. and things like that. Absolutely. And, and uh, it would be great for that. As well as, uh, you know, I'm interested in how can we use this to make customized things to help people who have, have problems. So uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great thing to think about. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And, you know, hopefully we can have you on again to talk about other t upcoming technology. Awesome. All right. Have, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for watching Seniors Count, brought to you by Mayor Martin J. Walsh and our Commissioner Emily Shea. To contact us, please call 617-635-4366 or the Mayor's 24-hour hotline at 617-635-4500. You can email us at elderly at boston.gov or you can find us on Facebook. Take care and see you next time. Right blessed days, dark sacred nights. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I think to myself.